From the last video inside of the renderer class here, we're trying to access the what of each uh, renderable. And then inside of the the geometry for there, we're trying to access now indices. We do not have access to either one of these. Now let's think about the design we're trying to make here. We have my game, and my game is going to tell the renderer to add geometries and add renderables and draw and that sort of thing. And so it doesn't really make sense. Maybe it does. I don't know. But I don't think it makes sense for my game to be able to access the geometry on a renderable. In fact, if we look at the renderable class, I think it makes sense for the game to modify where the geometry uh, can be rendered to, but probably not necessarily what geometry is being rendered. Maybe I do want to make that public. I don't know. It's the total personal debate here. I, I kind of wouldn't care if it is public if I want to allow the game to, to change it or not. I, I don't know. I think for now... I think for now let's limit visibility, and if it turns out we need to turn around and readjust, we can. But for now, let's limit visibility on this, but not on this. So I want my game to be able to modify where each renderable is being rendered, but not necessarily what geometry is being rendered after the renderable has been created. Now the other problem, though, is the geometry. If we can get this geometry, I'll oops, drag it over here. I'm not sure why I have the... Windows Donut there. Anyway, after I create a geometry, I think I really don't want any of these modified. Yeah, I don't. I don't want any of these modified. So there's a few ways to do that. We can make all this const and that sort of thing. But I think for now, really, geometry and render, both of these classes here, they are part of the rendering system. And I want the renderer to be able to access their their personal data. Sorry, I'm clicking all over the place. I, I, the renderer needs to be able to get in here, but nothing else. All right, so this is where C++ friend classes come in handy. A lot of people will argue, oh, friends, friends break encapsulation. It's such a blasphemous thing to do. When really, what's my other option? Okay, if, uh, I need the renderer to get in here and access this. And really, these two classes are helper classes to the renderer anyway. So I don't want to make them public because then my game can access it. And I don't, really don't want to be worried about that those kind of details up here. So I think the best thing is let's let's make a friend. A friend is a nice compromise all right, between uh, public and private. By friending the renderer class, we're essentially saying, hey, the renderer can get in here and see what he needs to see, but the outside things can't. So my personal view is friend classes don't break encapsulation as long as you use them correctly. I mean, even .NET has friend assemblies for good reason. And, and so I think, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to say friend class renderer, which essentially means the renderer can see any of my private data members, or if you want a good giggle, you could say the renderer can see, or friends can see each other's friends' private parts. He, 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 oh, so funny. Okay, friend class renderer, and we're good. Notice the red squigglies are gone, but then again, I don't trust red squigglies anyway. Okay, back to painting. We're going through each one of the renderables. We grab the reference to that renderable. We send down the indices for that renderable. renderable. <laughs> now we need to send down the vertices. But the vertices are a little more different because we need to transform each vertice using the where matrix of a renderable. So here we go. For, for uint j gets 0. Why j? Because we're using i up here and j makes a good letter. j! Whoops, j less than a renderer. What are we rendering? Die arrow. <laughs> How many verts are there? j plus plus. Like so. And then it's real simple. Transformed verts. This little temporary matrix we created in the last video. Transformed verts. Sub j gets r dot where. Okay, remember the matrix determines where we want to render our geometry times that by r dot what uh, vertice sub j. Okay, oops, sorry. Let me let me see if I explain that again. It's just like my GL window when we did our painting 
originally. We created our operator matrix, and then we used that operator on each one of the original verts to create a new vertex or vector location, and then we sent that down to OpenGL. Same thing here, I'm just going through the geometry for this renderable, taking the vertice, that vertice, vertice and and multiplying it by the wear matrix and putting that into transformed verts. And I believe that's the only thing we need to do in this array, so I'll erase the curly lines just to make half of you upset. GL buffer subdata. We need to send our transformed verts down to the uh, buffer that's bound to the array buffer binding point. We're going to do it at offset zero. The size is the size of vector 3D times, maybe we need to go on the next line for this, size of vector 3D times r dot what num vertices. So each vertex is made up of vector 3D. Uh, we multiply, we take the size of one of those vector 3Ds, multiply that by the number of verts. That's the amount of data we need to send down. And then here we actually have to send a pointer to the data we're, we're sending now. Well, that, that's transformed verts. So transformed verts and transformed verts is still on the stack because we're still in scope of this this uh, function. Now hopefully the rest is uh, pretty straightforward. We just have to say GL. Hey, draw elements. The mode. Remember the mode. We did GL lines and GL triangles. We did GL lines for the boundaries and GL triangles for the for the ship. So we actually have to make that part of the geometry. I forgot to do that. I forgot to do that. And it looks like the is a GL enum. The mode is a GL enum. GL enum uh, draw mode, which means when we add a geometry, we need to pass that in. So go to the render, add geometry, and we'll say GL enum. I'm going to do this on the next line. GL enum, enum, render mode. Render mode can be lines or triangles, or there are, actually are some other render modes. I'm going to copy this and go to the render r r r r CPP, and in the add geometry, we need to put that argument in as well. And we need to use that argument. So right here, g dot render mode. Did I call it draw mode? Ugh. Render mode. Sorry, I need to be consistent here. Render mode gets render mode, not render modes. Render mode. You may think, Jamie, go edit your videos. Well, you try making a zillion videos on game engine programming. Okay. <laughs> okay, now we have the, the render mode. So, r dot, the geometry dot arrow render mode. Uh, how many elements do we want to draw? r dot what again? Uh, num indices. The type, they are GL unsigned shorts. Remember, we have to def describe our data to OpenGL. And then this, this is an offset into the buffer, but we're not going to offset into the buffer because we put the indices right at the beginning of the element array buffer right here. Uh, so there's actually one thing we forgot to do, and that is the attributes. If we go... I know I explained this in a previous video, but we said, hey, we, we, uh, a vertex can be made up of several attributes. Right now we're only using the position, but f we need to enable those attributes to send them down to OpenGL. I believe the reason they did this is for optimization, so we don't have to process more data than is necessary. So we need to enable the attribute array, and we actually have to set up the pointer for the attribute array into the uh, the array buffer. Looking for GL vertex a trib. Is that right? Yep. GL vertex a trib pointer. And right here we did it after we sent down some of the data, but I think we can actually get away with doing that earlier. So let's go back to the initialized GL. Uh, we send that all down. Right here, GL enable vertex 
a trib array. Okay, enable the first one, and then now that we've 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 created our buffers, we bound them, and we also allocated the actual buffer objects. We can set up the pointers into the buffer data. So I'm actually going to go as far as saying gl vertex a trib a trib pointer. And again, if you if you can't remember what all these functions do, go back to those videos where I talk about OpenGL and and the trib pointers and a trib array and that sort of thing. Is that'll make it much clearer to you. Attribute zero, that's the only attribute we have is the position attribute. There are three floats per vertex. I don't know why IntelliSense isn't keeping up with this. The size, that's what size is, three floats per vertex. The, the type is GL float. Uh, normalized GL faults, they're not normalized and don't you dare touch them. The stride, Okay, remember I talked about stride and offset, and I showed you buffer offset in those previous videos. The stride is zero. Okay, we are tightly packed. It's one vector 3D, then another vector 3D, then another vector 3D, then another vector 3D. And the offset is the beginning of the buffer. So there we go. We've enabled our vertex trib array. We have our pointer. Uh, go down to paint gel. We're ripping through all the renderables, uh, sending the data down, and telling OpenGL to draw it. I think we're good to go. Now I'm going to hit Control shift b and get about 101 compile errors, I'm sure of it. Uh, we'll solve all that in the next video. If you don't want to walk through that with me, then skip the next video and, and go on to after I get this, this beast to compile.